Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. As you know, I am big into archery now and I've been testing out a lot of different stuff. Uh, the first survival bow that I demonstrated was the Spectre 2 from X Spectre. Well, I have another X Spectre bow to show you today. And this one is a lot different. And it took me a little getting used to and figuring out. But once I did, it's definitely different and definitely interesting. Uh, what threw me at first was how small it was. It just felt weird, but both me and Will couldn't argue with the fact that it did shoot rather well. And it is a 50 pound, no, 55 pound draw weight. And it's only this big folded up. So that's interesting. Now the other thing that's interesting about this particular bow, which I didn't even figure this out until yesterday, because it doesn't really explain it very well on the website and there's no videos on it. So I was like, how in the heck is this possible? I don't, I don't get it. I'm reading it, but I don't get it. Well, I finally got it. You have the ability of stringing this up two different ways. So you can have a 45 pound draw weight or a 55 pound draw weight. You also have the, the option of ordering this in 35 or 45. So you got 35, 45 and you got 45, 55. This is 45, 55. So, and I tend to keep it on the 55. So let me go ahead and put this together. So all you do is you take the, take the limbs out here. There's your riser. You can stick your bowstring in there and then you put it together. Now one thing me and Will talked about, we agreed that since this is a takedown bow, you always want to string this up so it's flexing the same way. If you're stringing it up one way one time and the other way the next time, uh, we worry about it wearing out the limbs. So what I did was I marked the limbs so I know that I'm always putting them in the right side and each time that I do it. Now here's the part on how you determine whether you want 45 pound draw weight or 55 pound draw weight. See here is the riser. You see the top right here. This is where you just slide that in to put it in. But up here, this is the key part on how you determine. If I put it in like this and I string it so that my string is on this side, this is higher, this is going to give it the 55 pound draw weight. If I string it so that my string is on this side, so this is lower right here, that's going to give it more flex. That's going to give it the 45 pound draw weight. Took me a while to figure that out, but I finally did. Now, as with the Spectre 2, I had a problem with the air arrest. I'm not a big fan of how they set up their air arrests. And I've already changed this, so I'll just kind of put that in the screen right here and show you how it was before. And Again, there wasn't any real instructions on the website, so I guess you have to just flex those little limbs in there to have it the way you want, but I just didn't, it wasn't secure enough. It didn't hold the arrow well enough for me to be happy with it. So I took that off. I put my own arrow rest on. Now the arrow rest that I put on here, I put on before I figured out the 45, 50, 55 pound trick. So what I put on here is a $5 bare weather rest arrow rest. And this is specifically set up in the direction of setting this up for a 55 pound draw weight. Now, knowing what I know now, let me grab something here. Knowing what I know now, I would suggest if you're going to switch out the arrow rest that you use the arrow rest that I had that I put on the Spectre 2 which is the it's I think it's called a flipper rest 2 
So if you had this on here, then it wouldn't matter which way you strung up your bow. If you wanted to go 45 one time, 55 the other time, either way, this arrow rest is going to work. The one that I put on, what I should have is I should have that arrow rest on this bow and I should have this arrow rest on that bow. So pretty, it's a pretty new bow, not a lot out there, so you are learning from my mistakes. Okay, one thing I should point out, we discovered early on when we first strung this thing up that the brace height was really, really low. And if you don't know, the brace height is the distance of the bowstring to the riser, which rule of thumb should be right about here. So what you're going to have to do if you don't know how to adjust that is when you put on the bowstring, you just twist it twist it around that's going to slightly shorten the string until you get your brace height right about here this is where it wants to be if you put it on without doing that the brace height is like down here and you're gonna smack your wrist every time so here it is completely assembled and you're probably thinking to yourself if you shoot archery at all that looks really small. Let me compare it here to the Expector Spectre 2 bow just to give you an idea. Here's the Spectre 2, which we've already reviewed. So, as you can see, it is quite a bit smaller than the Spectre 2, but yet, configured this way, you've got 10 pounds more draw weight. So that's interesting. So what it comes down to here is this is a bow that is going to pack down in your pack smaller and still have enough power for a good clean kill on just about any animal in North America in a survival situation. But again, once again, just to demonstrate how small this is as a packable survival bow, you haven't seen the video on this yet. This is my new bow. This is this is a traditional bow I would recommend for just about anybody starting out. This is a Samic Sage. It's a 62 inch, 45 pound traditional recurve bow. So take a look at this <laughs> next to the Samic Sage and that should give you an idea of how small this bow is. So we come down to the money shot shooting arrows out of this thing. How's it work? Let's move the camera around and try it out. Before anybody complains about what I had to do with the arrow rest, you know, blah, 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 why can't it just be perfect out of the box? Unlike knives, archery is a highly customizable thing, as I quickly found out. There are hundreds of freaking arrow rests, different strings, silencers, kisser buttons, releases. It all comes down to what works best for you. So it's not unreasonable. Most bows that aren't just a simple shelf rest like the Samic Sage, if it has any kind of installed arrow rest, people are going to generally switch that out for the arrow rest of their choice, which is just what I did here. So. My knock's a little twisted. There it is. And you'll as you'll see, this isn't gonna be the big pullback just because this bow is so small. Alright, in a second here I'm going to shoot the guy in the lawnmower, we'll see how we do on distance, but just give us a couple more shots.
right, let's go check that out. Seems after a couple minutes it just starts to click. You see I was going straight for the bullseye on this target. I don't know if it's just easier for my eyes to lock in onto this target versus the yellow bag, but it does seem like I shoot better when I'm shooting this target. So on the very first one, I pretty much almost bullseyed it. Pinch it right at the bag and pull out so we can see the penetration. So that's a foot. Yeah, that's on styrofoam. Obviously, it's not going to penetrate as much on that heavy bag. Okay, here lately it seems like my biggest problem is I'm switching from bows too much. So it takes me a minute to warm up to a particular bow. Although I do got some good footage from the other day shooting this with Will. But you'll see I don't have as much pull on this because this thing's not very big. That was a good shot. So I had one decent shot, one okay shot, and one crappy shot. Move the camera here. And keep it on there, try this, try this again. Try two more. So as you can see, you can do pretty good with this bow and you can feel you can feel the power of the pull even though the power of the pull is based on that this just isn't that big So you'll see I had some sloppy hits, just kind of go fast, uh, screwed a couple of them way up, but as I kept going, uh, they just I started being able to dial them in a lot better. And something hit me, I don't know what the hell it was, got my finger on something. That's probably one of those wild shots where I slipped. So I'm just moving the camera this way so we know we're not playing around with editing or anything like that. So had a couple wild shots, then got it in here and then I, as I kept going I started getting the feel for it again and just started dialing them in closer and closer. Didn't score any bullseyes on that but main grouping about that big all right I'm gonna go back to the exact same spot which is about 20 yards and do one more run with this I was determined to get at least one bullseye. At least I got it in there on the last one. There was a couple times I'm wearing a stick sweatshirt where I was hitting my sleeve. Messed me up a little bit. So I got one, two, three, four, five in the blue, one in the red, one in the bullseye, four in the white, four in the black, and one wild shot. So not great, but I think a lot of people would not expect to be able to shoot with any degree of accuracy with something like this. But it just goes to show somebody with 2.5 weeks of archery experience can do relatively decent with something like this. 
So inevitably, people are going to ask me, Chris, which one do you like better? Do you like this or do you like the Spectre 2 better? Well, they both have their, their pluses and minuses. The Spectre 2 is definitely easier on the hand. I mean, you can tell that that does not look ergonomically comfortable. You, know, you don't notice it doing the, the one-two shot, but if you're sitting out here for 15 minutes or more just slinging arrows, it gets a little uncomfortable. However, I really like the way this thing is put together. I would like to see a larger version of this, but you cannot argue with the fact that for as small as this thing is, and as small as it goes down to, the fact that you can shoot arrows with a 55 pound draw out of this thing is pretty impressive. Now it might actually feel a little bit easier if I switched it around and shot it at the 45, which I'll do another video where I do that. But before I do that, I need to either find some place in town that sells the flipper to rest or I gotta order a new one off of Amazon. That way my arrow rest can be used in either configuration. But don't let the uh, little modification things bother you too much. Consider the fact that you're getting something like this for 79 bucks. And just about any bow, and the reason there's so many accessories out there for archery is because no one's ever happy with one way. I've looked at uh, some other ones, you know, before I bought my Sam Sage, I was looking at uh, Martin Jaguar, Martin Sabre, different types of recurves. And reading the reviews on those is tough because no one's happy with anything. And everyone wants to put different arrow rests and stuff on there. So, I mean, that's all I did with this is I just put, took the arrow rest that it came with off and put an arrow rest that I liked on. The only thing that concerns me is the roughness of this part right here, wearing down your bowstring over continued use. So I would, uh, another thing that might work rather well, I uh, didn't think about this till right now, is get yourself a roll of Teflon tape, you know, for pipe threads and stuff like that couple wraps of Teflon tape on here right before you put your bowstring on that would probably protect it rather well but just remember when you're stringing this thing up that you're probably gonna have to twist the string to shorten it because if you don't your brace height is gonna be about this tall it's not gonna feel right you're gonna smack your wrist so twist it till you get your rule of thumb up to about here and then this thing's gonna shoot rather nice I said, you see me start out with it, it's a little bit rough, but the further I go, as I start to remember how it feels and where my anchor point is on this particular bow, there's no, with this one, it's so small, I can't really eyeball it. I'm hitting the target solely based on my anchor point and pointing with my left arm. So it's not difficult to learn this bow, again, I've got less than three weeks archery time under my belt. It's just that I shoot every single day. So check that out at xspector.com. But before we go, I did not show you the case that this comes in. So let me take this bow down and show you the case. So I've got my Raptor all broken down again. Case very similar to the one that comes with the Specter bow. It's a little bit shorter because the bow is shorter. This one does have Velcro on it. I didn't have to add that. And then it does have the adjustable strap and the sleeve to where you can also use this as a quiver once it is... Which way am I putting this on here? Ugh. Right arm. Dang it. I look like an idiot. Where do I put my arm through to get it go this way? <laughs> so just kind of give you an idea. That's all the bigger it is on your back. All in all, it's a pretty cool option. Uh, there is one more. Hopefully I will be reviewing that one as well. That's the Nomad from X-Spector. It looks like it's somewhere in between these two. It looks like the uh, Spectre 2 but the limbs are actually in 
four pieces. So two pieces on each end strung up uh, just allows it to fold down even further. So we'll check that out hopefully in the near future. But in the meantime, you can find all of these Expector bows on preparedmind101.com in the archery section. So if you want to support the channel, uh, definitely buy them through there. And I've got all the other little things on there that you're going to need uh, to tweak the bow out the way you like. Different arrow rests, knocking points, uh, shooting tabs, all that kind of stuff. I do believe this comes with some arrows too, but again, should really be shooting the feather fletched arrows. Although in this bow, you might be able to pull that off. I probably uh, should have checked that. We'll check that on the next video. Anyway, guys, there you go. That's the Raptor from Expector. 79 bucks on Amazon. I'm Chris from Prepared Mind 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out their website, expector.com, and my store, www.preparedmind101.com. Follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash preparedmind101, and all the relevant social media like Twitter, Instagram, and Google+. Other than that, I'll be back with some more archery videos here in the near future, so we'll see you then.